In this how to we are going to see that how to fire javascript function on click of the button and prevent form submission ok so uh, now again I am copying pasting the code to uh, to save some time here so here is my code and uh, I am going to the ASPX page and pasting it here and uh, right click and format it so that it will look nice and then I have to copy paste some more code from uh, my uh, ebook and that is javascript code ok yes now let's let me explain what we are doing here first we have a, a button naturally when when you click on the button it, it by default submits the page on the on the server but here in this case what we are doing is we wanted to uh, stop the default behavior okay so for that what we can do what we can do is that we can uh, fire a, a javascript function for example here i have fired a javascript function with return now what it will do is that it it will do it will perform whatever operations we want to perform and then it will return false when it will return false then what will happen is this particular form will not be submitted this form will not be submitted on click of this button okay let's see so alert and do not submit the form now let me click it javascript function call this is the alert that I am getting and when I will click it notice that the form has not been submitted now if I will remove this particular code on client click then what will happen is that as soon as I will click on the button the form will be submitted on the server see here it is being submitted notice here it the page is refreshing see ok but if I will click on client click return alert me because alert me is returning false after giving the alert so what will happen is that the page will not be submitted on the server see so now when I will refresh it is not submitting the, the page will not be submitted on the server and it will remain at the client side so that whatever operations we need to perform on the client side we can perform and if that uh, uh, operation is successful then we can return true in order to submit the form on the server and if we don't want to uh, submit then we can return false the next how to is how to avoid multiple clicks when submitting the form on the server ok this is very very frequently a faced problem by the developer so let me show you with, with this example I am copying pasting this time I am copying from the form elements as well and uh, then we have this is my server side event this is my sorry not server side event but server side methods ok now let us try to understand what I have written into this code so in this what we have is that we have a text text box payment amount and then I have a required field validator here that is uh, trying to make sure that user has to enter something into the text box and then there is another text box called description so that user can write some description about this payment and then I have a, a btn pay button on click of this btn pay we are firing submit data server side method so this is my submit data server side method okay what it does is that it basically just wait for 5 seconds and then after that it writes that okay we have entered amount this amount and what this is the description so basically whatever will be written into the into the first text box and second text box that will get written on the page but the important point to note here that will basically stops multiple click that will stop the multiple click is this line of code what this basically does is that it adds on click attribute and on click attribute it basically adds this line of th these many lines of code now let's see and try to understand what is these many lines of code this is basically javascript code so what it does is that it first checks for the page client validate if this is page client validate function, function and if 
it is returning false then just do not do anything return false it means that if my required field validator will return false means inter user has not entered any data here then this particular function will not fire okay and if it is not uh, false it means that it is true it means that required field validator function or any other asp.net validation uh, controls has uh, has validated successfully and it has passed then what it will do is that it will change the uh, button value to please wait okay because it is in this dot value here this is nothing but the button so it will change the button value to please wait and then it will disable it so after uh, changing the button text to please wait it will disable the button as well and then it will call it it, it gets the reference of get postback uh, event reference this basically gives you the javascript uh, that is related with the summit uh, uh, that's related with the on click event and what it does is that it basically sends the uh, uh, form on the server now how it it stops uh, uh, multiple click now what will happen is that as soon as the required file validator, field validator or any other validator has uh, uh, has been validated and it is true it simply disable the button okay and this particular line of code sends the data sends the form to the server or submit the forms to the server so in, so in this case what what happens user will not be able to click two times so now let us try to understand this with uh, with the demo so here is my page this is my payment payment amount and this is the description when i will click now notice that when as soon as i will click then this particular on click event will also get attached here and it will change the button text to please wait and it will disable the button see please wait and button has been disabled it is waiting for 5 seconds because of this particular code and then this the second line of code uh, under the summit data has fired and this has written amount is 1250 and description is asp.net how to's okay so in this way we are making sure that user will not be able to click multiple times now see here here because requires field validator is false so if not getting submitted now if i will write something here so required value validator will uh, be true and then i can write some description here now as soon as i will click button the button will get disabled and my page will be submitted on the server and it will process on the server and it will give me the response now this is very very uh, useful when you are developing a e-commerce type of application and uh, you have a payment method uh, sorry we have a payment button and you you want to avoid user to click the payment button twice so in this case as soon as the first time the user will be uh, will click the payment button then the button will be disabled and he will not be able to click multiple times so that you can avoid multiple payment from the user now the next uh, how to in this is uh, how to post page to another page in asp.net okay so for example uh, let's say suppose we have uh, two pages okay and you want to post uh, uh, page 1 to the page 2 in that case what we can do is that we can uh, use the post back url property of the button control let's see this with example here so this is my default.aspx page and in this page we have this code let us format it now in this code we have first uh, is the text box and then we have another button and in this button i have specified post back url equal to post to another page result dot aspx page and then we will create another page where my page will be submitted this first page will be uh, no posted back so let us add new item and write this file name and add now on the target page we need to write a few lines of code that will basically accept the uh, data that is being submitted to this page so let's go to the target page my target page is post to another page result dot aspx page and let us modify the page load event now here what is happening is that let's try to first understand this 
on, on the first page uh, that is uh, my default dot aspx page we have a text box called text txt name and on click of the button we are using postback url and that basically what it does is that it it sends the, uh, the the this particular page to post to another page result dot aspx page in another words we can say that th this postback url cows this particular default dot aspx page to submit on this post to another page result dot aspx page now in order to access this particular data txt name on another page on this page what we need to do is that because the uh, form uh, method is by default uh, is post there is two types of method here one is get and post if you will not specify anything then by default it will be post method now because the form method is post so if, in order to retrieve the data or, or the text box value from the first page we need to use request dot form and then pass the text box name here so my text box name is txt name and that's what I am passing here so request dot form and txt name that will this will basically give, give us the data data that will be entered into this text box so let's try to uh, uh, see this in the demo default.aspx and now let us me, let me write here now I'm gonna click submit to another page because of this postback URL and this particular page will be posted back on post to another page result.aspx page let me show you this now this is default.aspx now let, let us click this button and you can notice that this page is now being posted back on post to another page result.aspx page and whatever text I had written into the text box that is being written on the page because of this particular line of code so this was the way to post the data from one page to another page okay now let's go ahead and uh, see the next how to the next how to is how to specify the tab index for the text box button or any other ASP.NET control okay in order to uh, uh, specify the tab index of uh, text box or any other control we can use the tab index property of those controls so let us see this here in the default.aspx page let me uh, copy paste all these codes and let me right click and format the selections now first let me explain you what is the benefit of tab index okay so let me run this page and here is the three text boxes here now the benefit of, of tab index is that when I am on the first text box when I will press tab button it should come on, on second text box but it is going by default on third text box and when I am again pressing tab then it will go to the second text box And but this is not correct ideally it should come from top to bottom so when I am on the first text box when I click uh, when I press tab it should go to the second text box so in order to do that what we need to do is that we need to specify the tab index so my first text box tab index is 1 my second text box tab index is 2 and my third text box tab index is 3 now what will happen is that when I refresh this page let me run this page again instead of refreshing now you will notice that I am on the first text box when I uh, press tab it is going to second and then I tab then it is going to third so tab index property is basically used uh, to, to, to navigate the user properly from the top to bottom or from, from left to right in whatever way you want to navigate